Minera. I'm no longer a child. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 upsetting and uncomfortable moments from House of the Dragon. You've heard of the troubles in the Stepstones. Some Nearish prince is feeding Westerosi sailors to the crabs. For this list, we're looking at moments from this fantasy show's first season that had viewers wincing, cringing, and saying, yep, that's pretty on brand for HBO. Spoilers should be a given. Which House of the Dragon moment left you the most unnerved? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Crab Feeders, Tactics, and Fate Kragus Drehar did not attain the nickname Crab Feeder by handing out fish, shrimp, and algae to crustaceans. And the king's failures have allowed him to accumulate strength. If those shipping lanes fall, my house will be crippled. As we see from his handiwork at Stepstones, the masked prince admiral is not content with swift executions. He pins foes down on the beach, leaving the crabs to slowly consume them alive until nothing but a skeleton is left. No! No! Damon eventually faces Crab Feeder on the graveyard beach, which looks like a cross between the Normandy landings and Davy Jones's locker. Just when it seems like escape is off the table, Damon goes beast mode amid a fleet of arrows and swords. A dragon wraps up the battle, but Crab Feeder is Damon's to finish. Crab Feeder receives a quicker demise than he permitted his enemies, but it is every bit as dreadful. Number 9. The Green Wedding I know who it is. The handsome parable. Oh. Sir Kristen Cole. Usually when a character named Joffrey dies at a wedding celebration, we're all for it. Unlike a certain Baratheon's demise, though, there is no pleasure to be taken in Sir Joffrey Lonmouth's vile death. Sir Joffrey Lonmouth. For the Night of Kisses, they call me, though, I don't know why. At the Green Wedding, Joffrey conveys to Kristen that he knows about him and Rhaenyra. It might not have been Joffrey's intention, but Kristen construes this as blackmail. But we should swear to each other to guard them and their secrets. Because if those are kept safe, And so are we all. As chaos erupts among the crowd, Kristen kills Joffrey in cold blood without an ounce of restraint. By the time Kristen is finished, Joffrey's face is a smashed pumpkin. A devastated Lenor can still recognize what's left of his lover, however. <laughs> Kristen's actions are beyond deplorable, not to mention unnecessary. Joffrey would not be the last person to die for touching upon Rhaenyra's sex life. Number 8. Viserys and Lena's Date Yeah, there is an age difference between Viserys and Alicent, but the entirety of their relationship is not nearly as icky as this scene. Your Grace, it would be a great honor to join our houses as they were in Old Valeria. I would give you many children of pure Valerian blood so that we might strengthen the royal line and the realm." After only six months of being a widow, Viserys is pressured to find a new queen. Corlys Velaryon and Rhaenys Targaryen present their daughter, Lady Lena. What's to miss like? She is 12. She will mature. While the union makes sense politically, there is one cringy catch. Lena isn't even a teen yet. It's pointed out that Lena wouldn't have to perform certain duties until she's 14, but that doesn't make the proposed marriage any less unethical. When Viserys and Lena go for a walk to discuss the potential pairing, it pretty much puts all other awkward dates to shame. Viserys thankfully rejects the offer, but we'd like to erase this exchange from our memory banks. Number 7. Hold Your Tongue And let it be known. Anyone whose tongue dares to question the birth of Princess Rhaenyra's sons should have it removed. The illegitimacy of Rhaenyra's children is essentially the worst kept secret in the Seven Kingdoms. Even those who deny it probably know what's going on deep down. That doesn't mean you should bring it up in public, however. Her children are bastards! Vaymond makes the fatal mistake of not only calling Rhaenyra out, but doing so with such coarse words. 
With Lucera set to inherit Driftmark, Vaymond isn't in the right state of mind as his disappointment gets the better of him. Vaymond appears unfazed as the deteriorating Viserys threatens him, but he did not count on Damon coming up from behind. We've seen characters lose their heads more than a few times, but seeing everything from the tongue up go is strangely even more disturbing. He can keep his tongue. Number 6. Honed for the Hunt When I took command of the watch, you were stray mongrels. Starving and undisciplined. Now, you're a pack of hounds, sated and honed for the hunt. We've seen the bloodshed Damon can unleash on his own. So can you imagine the brutality when the strength of the City Watch is at his command? Beginning tonight, King's Landing will learn to fear the color gold. <laughs> Nobody is safe as the soldiers in gold start rounding up the people of King's Landing. Damon may call it a hunt, but it's nothing short of a massacre. As hands are chopped off, it appears we've seen the worst they can do. That is a small price, however, compared to what one man endures. We'll spare you the graphic imagery, but allow us to reenact what every viewer was thinking during this moment. Why are they pulling down his pants? Is that a thumb they just cut off? Why is it so big? Oh, uh, we get it. Gross. Our city should be safe for all its people. I agree. I just hope you don't have to maim half of my city to achieve this. Time will tell. Number 5. Wait. Are Rhaenyra and Daemon… Physical intimacy between relatives is far from a foreign concept in this franchise, but there is always a yuck factor whenever it arises. So? What do you want? Only the comforts of home. When Damon and Rhaenyra reunite, they head off into King's Landing for some quality uncle and niece time. As the night progresses, it becomes evident that Damon has something other than family bonding on his mind. Adding to the vulgarity, Rhaenyra is into him, although Damon decides not to go through with it. Uneasy conversations still await, as Viserys interrogates Damon about his daughter, while Alicent confronts Rhaenyra with a rather blunt question. So you did not. Must I truly refute that? Damon never touched me. Although the night could have gone in an even looter direction, Rhaenyra and Damon remain too close for comfort. Even at her wedding, Rhaenyra finds her uncle more alluring than the groom. <laughs> Number 4. An Eye for a Dragon Aemond upgrades from a pig to a dragon, although it's not easy for the audience to make out his darkly lit first flight. Speaking of vision, Aemond will have to get used to flying with one eye. Vega is my mother's dragon. Your mother's dead. Vega has a new rider now. She was mine to claim. Then you should have claimed her. Maybe your cousins can find you a pig to ride. It would suit you. A fight erupts when the kids learn that Reyna has been denied her mother's dragon. It's brutal, yet admittedly satisfying, when Lucera stands up for himself and his family's honor. The night is just tensing up, as Alicent demands an eye for an eye. If the king will not seek justice, the queen will. Sir Kristen, bring me the eye of Lucerys Valarian. Up until this point in the series, Alicent has done a commendable job at keeping her cool. When Viserys denies these demands, though, Alicent takes matters into her own hands. Alicent settles for slashing Rhaenyra's arm, but only because Aemond is content with his dragon. Do not mourn me, mother. It was a fair exchange. I may have lost an eye, but I gained a dragon. Number 3. Rhaenyra's Baby Strangely enough, so many of the uncomfortable moments from Season 1 of House of the Dragon come from fraught birthing sequences. From Lena's tragic passing to Rhaenyra's third pregnancy by way of Harwin Strong, the women on the show have it especially rough whenever the midwives are around. The Greens are coming for you, Rhaenyra. And for your children. You should leave Dragonstone at once. Oh. After having successfully delivered five children, the season one finale sees Rhaenyra go into premature labor with the news of Viserys' death and Aegon's ascension. Her term is far from complete. This should not be happening. Writhing in agonizing pain, 
Rhaenyra rejects any and all assistance from the sisters. Instead, she cries out until her baby is born. And what a horrific sight it is. Princess, let us help you. <laughs> this, coupled with the news of Lucerus's death at the end of the episode, and Rhaenyra definitely has reason to be vengeful. Number 2. King Viserys, not quite dead yet. David Cronenberg wasn't involved in this show, but several scenes concerning Viserys could be mistaken for his signature body horror. We should leech it again, Megan. It's a wound that refuses to heal, Grand Maester. Might I suggest cauterization? Cauterization would be a wise cause of treatment, Your Grace. The king's gnarly flesh wound in the pilot is just a small taste of the rotting flesh that awaits. Halfway through the season, it appears Viserys has met his end. Many were surprised to find him alive in the following episode, albeit not looking his best. A fine prince. Sturdy. You will make a fearsome knight. By the final chapter of his life, Viserys can barely make it to the Iron Throne. Half of his face needs to be covered with a mask, although his other side isn't exactly his good side. My own face is no longer a handsome one. <laughs> if indeed it ever was. Being one of the show's more honorable characters, it's sad when death finally collects Viserys, but it also comes with great relief. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Queen is Dead Of all the uncomfortable birthing sequences on the show, this one still makes us squirm over the plain coldness of the whole thing. It's all right. This is fine. After numerous failed attempts to deliver an heir, Viserys is confident that his queen will finally grant him a son. When the pregnancy takes a turn for the worse, Viserys makes the heartbreaking decision to sacrifice Emma in the hopes that their son will live. The child is born, but his time on Earth is tragically short. As if Viserys couldn't be experiencing more grief, Damon has the nerve to call the late prince the heir for a day. The heir for a day. All of this sets a precedent for another show where we shouldn't get too attached to anybody. But we can't help it. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.